You are now listening to the Soul and Wonder Podcast, Episode 21, Medical Intuition. Welcome to the Soul and Wonder Podcast, where the conduits of the body, depths of the mind, and atlas of the soul are explored with devotion. Through cultural exchange, Christopher and Sarah and their guests will deliver sacred wisdom from around the globe, uncovering the hidden gems of conscious living and holistic healing all to empower you on your journey of self-discovery. And now, here are your hosts, Christopher and Sarah. Welcome back to the Soul and Wonder podcast. We're happy to have you here. We are your hosts, Sarah and Christopher. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. (laughs) Wherever you are in the world. So before we get into our interview with the lovely Dr. Rita Louise, a medical intuitive and psychic, we'd like to give you a brief rundown of some updates with Soul and Wonder. Yes, we are hard at work as usual. I feel like we say that all the time, but it's true. If you were to see all the whiteboards in our workspace, (laughs) you would understand. Um, But we do have a lot going on. We are getting closer and closer to to providing you our new services. We have integrative health support, which encompasses our three-stage Eat to Thrive wellness program, which we can't wait to unveil to the public. public. Uh, we We do have our test group going through that right now, and they are having incredible results oh my god incredible results it's really it's really nice to see that when you put in a lot of hard work it's it's paying off and seeing the benefit that people are receiving from this program especially because this is our second test group and our first test group only did one of the stages and even just doing one of the stages they experienced significant uh, changes and positive benefits and so seeing this second test group go through all 58 days of the food program and only being not even halfway through maybe a quarter of the way through and they're experiencing profound benefits so if you want to learn more about that program you can go to our website and you can either scroll down on the main page and click on uh, integrative health support or you can go up to work with us and you'll see the eat to thrive program tab and you can actually sign up for a free consultation in the meantime and we can walk you through your wellness goals and get you ramped up and ready to go for the program. And another feature that we'll be releasing to the public come June is our fulfillment life coaching. And a lot of people are like life coaching. How are you how do you coach life? Well, a life coach can cover a variety of niches, mine particularly being working with people who want to add more excitement, joy, passion, basically fulfillment in their lives. And we do this by using a step-by-step approach to targeting blockages and barriers within you that you can overcome working on yourself, but with me as your guide and support to bring you closer to your dreams and your goals. So we take that big goal, that big dream in your mind, and we break it down very small into tiny steps that are much more realistic and not so intimidating so that each week you can move closer to your dreams and desires, whatever they may be. And lastly, we just launched a new project called Meditate for Change. And this is up on our Soul and Wonder Inc. Facebook page. You can check out the event. Our first, and basically what it is to give you a quick rundown, Each month we will be doing a 10-minute guided meditation live on Facebook and Instagram at Soul and Wonder Inc. And the first topic that we'll be covering is self-love. Self-love. We're going to get all in the heart space. (laughs) But if you miss, the idea is to bring us all together and use our co-creative consciousness as a tool to raise the vibrations, make this world a much more positive place, starting from within. If you happen to miss that live video, that's okay, because we're going to have the videos posted up on our website as well as our YouTube channel throughout that month so that you can refer back to that video. And we actually encourage it because the more people and the more often people will use these videos throughout that short period of time, the more intense and powerful our co-creative consciousness will be in that moment. 
And that first meditation will be April 30th at 9.30 p.m. Eastern Time. So we look forward to seeing you there. And one more thing, uh, if you have any sort of uh, topic that you'd like us to cover on the podcast, any guests that you would like us to try to get on the podcast, please uh, send us a message. Email us, transform at soulandwonder.com, or simply go on our website, go to contact us, or you can just go on Facebook and send us a message. Yeah, we want to, you know, we want to give you the information that you want to hear. And, you know, there's a, we've already featured a plethora of really good guests that we think you all have enjoyed tremendously. But we want to keep increasing that outreach. So, chat with us. So, today we are blessed with the presence of best-selling author and medical intuitive, Dr. Rita Louise. We had a blast interviewing her, getting a peek inside her her life as a psychic and medical intuitive. Um, To give you a brief rundown of who she is, she uses a powerful synthesis of science and ancient wisdom, and her unique insights bridge the worlds of science, spirit, and culture and are really changing the way we view our place in the world. Dr. Rita possesses the caliber of knowledge and experience that organizations demand, and she infuses every engagement with both credibility and content. She has the unique ability to deliver a serious message through intriguing stories and her own brand of humor, which you'll get to hear in this podcast. Her high content presentations and down-to-earth strategies empower and motivate audience members to think outside of the box. And her deep insights inspire, invigorate, and energize people into looking at the world in a completely new way. So we're super excited to have her on this show as we talk about what medical intuition is, her story behind how she became or started developing her medical intuitive abilities as well as as her psychic abilities too. Um, She shares a few success stories of her clients and we really just break it down, talk about, you know, the psychic world in general. So I think that you guys are going to really enjoy this one. Yeah. And again, please message us with any questions, concerns you have and send us some topics. And stay tuned to the end of the podcast episode to get your health tip of the episode on lemon balm. Lemon balm. See you on the flip side. Check you later. All right, welcome back, listeners. We are now here with Dr. Rita Louise. Welcome to the show, Dr. Rita. Thanks for having me on, guys. It's a pleasure to be here with you today. It's a pleasure to have you. Where You're currently in Texas, aren't you? Yes, ma'am, I am. Which part of Texas? East Texas, really close to the Louisiana border, so near Shreveport. Okay. Oh, wow. How's, is it pretty hot there already? It's nice. It's warm. You know, it's classic spring weather. So short sleeve shirts, you know, I'm not quite to the shorts place yet, but, (laughs) uh, but it's beautiful. So we haven't quite hit the hot period yet. Yeah. We're familiar with the Texas heat. We, uh, Sarah's parents, uh, we stayed there for a few weeks at a time, uh, before we went to South America, they were in Arlington. So, uh, it was still pretty hot there as well. (laughs) Well, great. So Dr. Rita, we've already gave our listeners quite a bit of a rundown on you. Um, your website is incredibly intriguing. You, you provide so many services. So it was kind of difficult to think, well, what do we want to focus on in this interview? Because this, we could go so many different ways. Um, the, one of the things that really piqued our interest that we believe our listeners would enjoy knowing more about is your medical intuition evaluation. So since we'd like to make that the focus of this interview, can you kind of explain to our listeners a bit about what medical intuition evaluations are? Sure. So a medical intuitive, let's just even start with that term. A medical intuitive is someone who assesses a person's health on intuitive levels. And so a medical intuition evaluation is kind of the process of that interface with a client. You know, so I have people that contact me that have, you know, obviously physical issues that are going on, but they might also have emotional or spiritual issues that they need some insights into. And so 
the con the evaluation can run the gamut from talking about their auras and chakras or life events that have happened to them, as well as talking to them about issues that are going on in their physical body. You know, because my experience in working with this is that in many cases, if there's an issue in the physical body, there is something that has happened to them in their life that has created or underlies the physical illness. And so we get into all of those things. Absolutely. Yeah, that's, you know, the holistic approach to wellness is really the only treatment that we can offer anyone with the body, mind and soul. And we definitely find from not only personal experience, but just people that we meet that uh, the physical ailments are usually a manifestation of some sort of imbalance in the spiritual, emotional level. Oh, exactly. Exactly. And it is just so sad that our current medical practice um, profession doesn't even address those kind of things. They lump it all in under stress. But what stress for me might not be stress for you. Absolutely. And and they don't look at the things that happen in our lives that are have created that stress in the first place. Definitely. De- definitely. And, you know, it's nice to see that there are some doctors coming along that are trying to bridge the gap between Eastern and Western medicine. However, we definitely need more of them for sure. Oh, I, I completely agree. And it is really, uh, it's nice to see, you know, it, it's nice to see, you know, in the last few years, I have started to incorporate a vegan lifestyle. And I have found that You know, if you're looking for a doctor that's more holistic, that's a traditional MD, you know, I'm kind of using that word, they tend to be a little bit more open, you know, and there are a number of doctors that are really working with diet and nutrition as a way of life versus diet and nutrition to lose weight, you know, and just giving you the same canned response um, that I have found tend to be more spiritually open then, you know, you're run-of-the-mill doctor. It must be all the plants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we are. Well, I, uh, it's part of that open-mindedness and, I, and looking at alternatives for themselves. Totally. Definitely. And, and the medical field has really taken on this whole uh, nutrition approach in a really nice way. I know that still there's a lot of doctors that are lagging in this, but a lot of the doctors that are coming forward, especially in the whole food plant-based movement, uh, Dr. Caldwell uh, Esselstyn, Esselstyn Campbell. T. Colin Campbell, and those guys that are really taking this on and, and trying to get more nutrition training in the medical schools to show that the power of plants, it's a real thing, and then it can um, really help people a lot on all levels, body, mind, and soul. Well, and the interesting thing is, is that here in little podunk Marshall, Texas, near (laughs) Shreveport, Louisiana, we have one of the biggest whole food plant-based conferences in the country. You know, it's funny you said that because I just saw that we are, um, our last episode we interviewed, or two episodes ago, we interviewed Adam Sud, and he's a part of that. He was, uh, he's a part of the Forks Over Knives movement, and he will actually be at that uh, event. I think that's coming up, correct? Uh, this coming weekend. Yep, there you go. Yeah, he was super pumped. I'll be about there. That. Great. Oh, you'll Enjoy get to Adam. See Adam. He's a great guy. He's, uh, has a, his, his story is incredible. And, uh, there's also a lot of other amazing people that are, are going to be there speaking. So, well, that's yeah. that's interesting that you've mentioned you've kind of adapted a somewhat vegan lifestyle over the past year or so. What what prompted you to get into that? Well, I mean, I've always been a very conscientious consumer. You know, I, I'm big on. Uh, homemade and balancing out what you eat and eating lots of fruits and vegetables. I mean, that's always been part of my life and my dietary choices. Um, And so when I moved to Marshall, you know, I was looking for like-minded people and found a whole food plant-based group that met here once a month and started participating in that group. And so it really wasn't that big of a leap for me to incorporate, you know, their concepts. I mean, I am not a hundred percent vegan. I will admit that. <laughs> um, but I'm also allergic to milk. 
you know, and I think for a lot of people that, you know, even look at the difference between vegetarian and vegan, they're like, but I got to give up cheese and milk. And for me, that was, that was the easiest hurdle to uh, <laughs> jump over. Sure. And, and even in a whole food plant based, there's I think there's a lot of confusion around that that is 100 percent vegan, but it's not. And it still allows the five to 10 percent of of meat and um and dairy depending and, and on dairy. personal depending on your state of health you know of course you have i always tell people you can be whole foods plant based without being vegan but you can also be whole foods plant based and be vegan and it's kind of like a nice little community that shares two cultures Mm -hmm. Um, so really quickly, I'm curious now, and since you've increased your plant intake and decreased your animal intake, have you noticed that directly correlating with your intuitive abilities and your medical intuition evaluations? Not that I can actually make a correlation to... I know that I feel better. Um, Mm -hmm. I know that my, I'm going to say my recovery time is better because in addition to moving to Marshall, I purchased a historic home and I've been uh, renovating it for the past three years. And so, (laughs) and, and I have been, I have found that I can do these amazing things and, you know, finish a day's work of stripping wallpaper and and recover and be up and about the next day and not be laying in bed for a week based on the level of work and effort that I put in. So I I think that's really amazing. Sure. And that's going to directly, you know, impact your work life as well. If you're too tired from doing, you know, house renovations and other excess work, then, you know, you need that extra boost of energy to get through the day. So I'm curious, what, how did you get involved in doing this medical intuition? What's your story with that? Okay. Um, without going all the way to the beginning, um, I had wanted to become a psychic for many, many years, starting as a little kid, and found the Berkeley Psychic Institute much later in life and studied with them and opened up a practice doing psychic readings, energy work with clients. And one of the things that I found was that I was always finding people's health problems and came to realize that it was not something that many people keyed in on. I mean, I think we all have our own gifts that we bring to the table. You know, some people resonate or, you know, the dead come to them because that's what happens. You know, some people are really good at evaluating past lives, you know. And so we all have those gifts. And so I saw that as this gift that I was given. But with it, people would go, well, what can I do? And it's like, (laughs) I don't know. You can meditate. (laughs) Meditation's good. And so I decided to go back to school and got a degree as a naturopath and then a PhD in natural health counseling. And so when... And and actually, when I started doing this work, uh, medical intuition wasn't even a term. And so that came on much later um, in my professional life. And, um, you know, and so with my practice, there's the intuitive work, but it's always kind of bouncing off the doctor brain. And I joke around and, and say, well, this is the doctor brain talking, you know, but let me change over to that intuitive brain and see what I see. But they kind of keep each other in check. And the doctor brain goes, but what about this? But have you checked her liver? And <laughs> have you looked at this? And the intuitive brain will go, oh, okay, well, let me look. And and it goes and it digs for what I'm seeing. you know. And then the doctor brain might jump back in and say, well, you know, these this list of supplements or ideas are, you know, what would traditionally be used for this kind of condition. And the intuitive brain kind of sorts through that list and goes, this one, this one, and this one resonate with my client. So instead of just giving this generic, use golden seal, if you have, you know, some kind of a bacterial infection, you know, it'll go through several different options and go, you know, your body really resonates with olive leaf extract much more. You're going to get the most benefit from it. So it's really this interesting kind of schizophrenic thing that I have going on (laughs) in my head every day. 
<laughs> That's awesome. We were just we just actually interviewed a girl um, who hand cra- wild crafts her own herbs and makes tinctures and all that stuff. And she's also a counselor through the herbal medicine. And that was one of the main things that she said was, sure, we might say that this herb, you know, is kind of like a blanket for this illness. But some people's bodies react more strongly to certain herbs than others do and it's not always the same for everybody all across the board and so you pairing that rational mind with what we deem in mainstream society is irrational even though I would you know argue that um, that kind of gives you this balance I think so and I, I feel like it's been very effective in the work that I've been doing I mean people seem to be getting results so, that's great yay <laughs> <laughs> So when you receive intuitive information about a client's health, how do you receive that information? I know you said that you see, or is, is that incorrect? No, I, my primary tool is that I am a clairvoyant. And so okay. when I look at people, I'm looking at them, you know, so I'll look at it. You know, if I'm, you know, there's different layers in our, our psyche. There's the physical body, but then there's the etheric body and the emotional body and the mental body. And so I can kind of like, tune in on their physical body and then kind of back out and look at some of the ancillary parts of themselves. Um, But I'm also very kinesthetic. And so their pain is my pain. So if I'm poking around on something and it hurts, I feel it in my body, you know, or I'll get a throbbing or, I mean, thankfully when I move on to something else, it just goes away, but it's a, it's a great indicator. And, um, You know, and I also receive a certain amount of guidance, and I'm going to say on auditory levels, not my best, but it's there, you know, and and I listen to it and heed the guidance that I receive. Now, is this something that I I understand that when you're poking and prodding and and doing everything that you're doing with a patient one-on-one in your office, are you able to do anything from a distance with the medical intuitive um, stuff? At this point in time, 99% of my clients are by phone or by Skype. They are. Okay. Mm-hmm. Isn't that incredible? I, you know, I do tarot readings by phone and also I have my Reiki certifications and so I'll do distant healing sessions sometimes and it always blows people's minds that you can connect on that energetic level without having to be in that physical space. Exactly. And actually they have uncovered that dynamic in physics where it's called non-locality where something happens over here and it impacts something over there and so we actually are starting to find the science to support some of this phenomena you know and and i have clients that will ask well how can you do it over the phone Mm -hmm. you know and and my comment back is well when i'm reading you you know when i'm when i'm tapping into look at your kidneys or look at your gallbladder or whatever I'm happening to be doing in that moment, I close my eyes. I go, so if you're sitting here, you're sitting on the phone, it's not like I'm looking at you. I'm not touching you, you know, so why do you need to be in a chair next to me? Right. That's a good point. Yeah. You know, I always tell people who've received a healing session through Reiki with me that, Um, it's more of a meditative experience on my side of, you know, the phone and where, you know, having my eyes closed and feeling around. If someone saw me in the room, (laughs) they would think I'm out of my mind, moving my hands around, doing all this weird stuff. But you could very (laughs) much (laughs) feel everything happening around you. And I'm, I'm glad to hear you kind of break that down a little bit. Mm-hmm. Well, and when I'm working and, and I agree with you with the, you know, my hands are moving, especially if I'm doing energy work, not so much the reading part, but if I'm doing energy work with a client long distance, um, you know, I visualize what I see happening. I'm like, if I see like I need to work on an area because I see trapped energy, I feel trapped energy. I mean, my hands are moving all around and, and then I start to yawn and my eyes start to water and it, it really is an embarrassing experience <laughs> and have to apologize to people when they're in person and I'm doing this test. Just like, I'm not tired. This is just what happens. I have a Kleenex. It's all good. <laughs> and, um, 
<laughs> but actually, I like doing long distance work with a client or have them sit in a chair across from me much more than have it, working with them on the table. Because like if I'm adjusting someone's back from a long distance perspective, I can be like a chiropractor and I'll like take their head and twist it around and move their arms <laughs> around in circles like a Barbie doll. But it works. It you does. know, you can't do that to their physical body. It just doesn't work. That's a good point. That's a really good point. And, you know, while you said science may be coming out with some explanations here and there, it's still people have to see it to believe it or experience it to believe it in some cases. Exactly. Exactly. And I think for the listener, I would like to put out, you know, if they've never had that experience, you know, many times people want to have an experience, quote unquote. Yeah. And sometimes the experiences, they just feel a lot more relaxed mm -hmm. and they just feel much more grounded. And that is the experience. Right. You know, it's not trumpets or, <laughs> you know, some major thing. It is having, you know, feeling more one with the universe, however that plays out for them. That is the experience. That is what you're hoping to have happen. Well, I think that a lot of people, when they talk about quote unquote experience, they generally think visions and those sort of things. But again, I'm glad that you clarified that because a lot of it is just feelings. You know, when you're searching for that vision or oftentimes, many times it, it, it doesn't come, but the feelings do come along with it if you can tap into that. Well, and then if you have your expectations set for something else and it doesn't meet those expectations, you fail to realize what you did get out of the whole situation. Exactly. And that's one of the reasons why I brought it up is that there are so many people that see things on TV or perhaps read a book, but I'm going to say more TV and they they they're led to believe that this is how it's supposed to be. I mean, that was my story. I was led to believe the psychic experience was going to be I was going to see this ghostly apparition of people floating by or, you know, I was waiting for the trumpets to say, hey, you're having a psychic experience. I mean, I don't really know what I was expecting. And then I had a, an experience that was validated. Then they said, hey, that was a psychic experience. And I realized that I had been very psychic my whole life and never knew it because <laughs> no one said, you know, when you pick up a box that's wrapped at Christmas and you go, well, you know, this is either a crystal or a pewter figure. And in that box is a pewter figure. And when you pick up a different box, it's a crystal. That is a psychic thing. It really is, you know, and I think most people, if not all of us, have these experiences all the time and we just don't notice it. We don't see the synchronicity of surrounding us. Exactly. And, and that's one of the things I tell my students is, you know, one, that is the experience and they need to validate it and they need to recognize how often it happens in their lives because that is that really is how you start to develop your psychic abilities. By noticing those little moments. Yes. And kind of nurturing those. Uh, yes. Out of curiosity, at what age did you really start to hone in on this and, and develop it into your, uh, or implement it into your practice? Well, I started at the Berkeley Psychic Institute when I was 30. Okay. And so after I was in their program for three weeks, it was kind of like, Oh, that's what you want us to do? I, I always do that. <laughs> and, it, and it was just kind of like, oh. Interesting. Yeah, that's, you know, Chris and I, throughout our relationship, since we've um, been together, our, both of us, our intuition has sort of skyrocketed. I, I mean, I could say that I've noticed um, intuitive abilities within myself since I was a child as well, but it, it wasn't nurtured very well. There was more fear surrounded it because my parents didn't really know what was going on. And 
I was taught by Hollywood that all this stuff should be scary. And so I kind of put up a brick wall where it kept me from exploring that further um, until it just all started happening again against my will, you know, in my early 20s. Um, but then I started opening that slowly but surely, kind of discovering new grounds. But when Chris and I got together, it's like both of our intuitive abilities just increased. Um, I, I guess it's kind of like finding that other half of you, you know, and it completes, it just sort of amplifies when we're together. Um, but uh, where was I going with that? I was I had a whole point to that. Um, so, you know, it is definitely something that I think as you get older, you can nurture and realize what it is that's happening. And would you say that most people could learn this ability if they feel like they don't have it? I believe that everyone has psychic abilities, but psychic abilities are like dancing. Everyone can dance, and some people dance really good, and other people... <laughs> Not so much. I like that you know, analogy. But, but you can take someone that can't dance and teach them to dance, and they might not become the best dancer in the room, but they'll at least have some skills and some abilities. Sure, sure. So I know we kind of touched a little bit on the science of, you know, doing distant healings and medical intuitive readings and things of that sort. But, you know, some skeptics still might say that medical intuition is pseudoscience. What would be your response to that? Ha, 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 ha. No. <laughs> Great response. <laughs> I, I think that they have just not experienced the power of it, and they have not taken the time to explore it or investigate the ramifications of it. But it's kind of like everything else that we find, you know, in the medical profession or in alternative history, you know, they, they dismiss it before they take the time to try to even embrace it. Absolutely. I think that's the biggest thing. I think most people that are the skeptics and the people that are saying these things about whatever it is we're talking about, whether it's medical intuition or anything i think it's it's people that have not tried it and or have witnessed it for themselves and i think it's really important that if you're going to make a judgment on anything or make any call on anything is that you actually try it yourself first or have some sort of experience with it before you're able to say anything about it you know and there are some people that have tried to have that experience but they are so skeptical that it's almost impossible to read them. <laughs> it's almost like they have a blockage so Big deep. <laughs> I mean, one of the things that I have learned over the years in doing this is that in, in order to really be read, our personal energy has to be moving and flowing. And I don't mean my personal energy as the reader, but the personal energy of the client. And so if you're a skeptic, it's kind of like you freeze your energy in stone. You cross your eyes, you dig your heels into the sand and put out the energy of prove it to me. And from a psychic's perspective, you can't read it because there's nothing to read except a big brick wall. And so they might not get a good reading. They might not have a good session, but it's their own doing and not really a reflection of the person doing the session. That's a sure. really good point. Um, it reminds me, uh, actually, when we were traveling through Colombia, I did a tarot reading for this lady at a hostel that we were staying at. And the, the owner of the hostel, this Colombian woman, she didn't speak a word of English. She was one of the most beautiful people I've ever met, very spiritually connected, um, had a good relationship with the shamans in the community. And she wanted to watch. And as I go to deal the cards, um, the lady across from me, I guess she had her legs crossed and her arms crossed and the, the host from the hostel told her in Spanish uncross your legs and uncross your arms open yourself and I it clicked to me at that moment that that's a physical sign of you know an energetic barrier that this person was putting up and had I not noticed that you know from the host noticing it the reading could have went a completely different direction but once she opened herself up physically the reading was just so smooth and everything that she needed to hear and that totally happens or sometimes you'll communicate something to a client and they just don't want to hear it mm -hmm. and so then they 
I'll, I'll share this one story because it still amazes me. I was at working a uh, wellness expo doing readings, and I started talking to this woman about this man that was part of her life. Um, he was on the level of husband, brother, you know, that level of familiarity, possibly a close family friend, uh, wasn't a parent, wasn't a child. So there was on that level. And I said, and you know, this person is sucking you dry and I'm going on and on and on. She goes, I don't know who you're talking about. (laughs) So I try to move on and I don't know about you, but for me, if, I'm not getting the inf- if if I can't make the communication, they shut me off, and I and I get nothing, you know. And so I keep kept coming around to this guy because that's all they were feeding me, or maybe it was just so important for her to hear about this guy that for the whole 15 minutes we were together, I just kept looping around to this guy. It was a terrible, from my opinion, it was a terrible session. <laughs> And then she writes me a check and she gets up from the table and she goes, yeah, I have a brother who's schizophrenic that I support. Uh. (laughs) And I just shook my head and I was like, thank you for validating me that I wasn't crazy. And this really could have been a really good session, but she was unable to hear it. That's, in that moment. Wow. They, they, that just proves that the client is in control of everything that they learn from that and receive. Mm-hmm. So for those that aren't skeptics and the clients that you have met with, I'm sure there's many and many of them. Um, how have you seen their lives improve after receiving sessions with you? Do you have any story that sticks out in your mind that you want to share? Well, this is, I I call it one of my miracle stories. And so this was a medical intuition session. And um, a woman came to me because she had uterine fibroids. Sorry, guys, it's a a girl issue thing. But (laughs) it was a miracle story nonetheless. And she had gone to the doctor and the doctor wanted to do a hysterectomy, which is pretty standard, you know, slice and dice medical mentality, which she really didn't want to do. And she wanted to get my opinion as to was it medically necessary for her to do. And so she was already pretty symptomatic. And I looked at her and I said, you know, if you make, you know, these dietary changes and work with these herbs, I recommended a couple of books to her. You know, because female issues is not really my big bailiwick, especially if there are hormones involved, which are too complicated for me. Um, And so I gave her some great recommendations. And I said, you know, if you start on this today or this week, I feel like you have a six month window to turn your body around to get back on the path. And but if you don't do it, then in six months, you're going to go past the line and really have to consider having the surgery done, which she totally heard. And so then I kind of, I was in her physical body, kind of like I was talking about before, and I kind of pulled my energy out and kind of poked around. And I looked at her and I said, do you have a boyfriend? And she said, yeah. And I said, you need to dump him. (laughs) You know, now sometimes things come out of my mouth and I'm like, oh my God. (laughs) And, um, And I said, my feeling is that you are giving him all of your energy with the hope, and that was the key, with the hope that he is going to love you in return, and he's not going to. You are not going to get that which you're hoping to receive from this man. So she was crying. I was kind of crying. You know, I was a little cry fest going on. <laughs> and, you know, the session ended, but I knew her. She was an acquaintance of mine. And about six months later, I saw her at actually the same wellness expo because it was a regular event. And she comes over and she gives me this big hug. And I'm like, well, what's going on? She goes, fibroids are gone. And so is the boyfriend. Wow. And the only thing she did was dump the boyfriend. That's powerful. So she didn't even follow any of the other advice. She just had to I mean, I think I think she made some dietary changes, but not the level that she and I had talked about. That's incredible. And that shows the power of energetic connection. Mm-hmm. But it also, I mean, it, it shows so much, you know, like that was the manifestation of her relationship in the body. 
you know, and by addressing the the emotional part of what was going on, it made the body respond and heal itself. And our society has just gotten so far away from making the association with something like that to our physical ailments. And it's it's refreshing to have people like you doing work like this that can help bring people back to that connection that we used to all have. Thank you. So that's really incredible. And I'm sure your other clients improve their lives as well, you know, following the advice by you. Um, do you what kind of other work do you do on your website? You mentioned energy healing, medical intuition. What else do you do? Um, I mean, I do spiritual counseling, which is, you know, kind of like a therapist, but I'm not a medical doctor. I'm not a therapist, um, you know, and just help people to kind of identify what paths are working for them, what aren't. I'll get a number of business people that will call me that are looking for direction and guidance. You know, they're looking to hire somebody or invest their energy into a, a new project or maybe bring in a collaborator and they want to see how these things are going to ferret out. I mean, one of the things that I'm able to access, there's the physical part, but I'm really able to look at energy and energy dynamics. And it's like, okay, so if I take this person, and I move them out of the picture where do where does everyone vibrate at or if this is where you're at now and i bring this dynamic in how is it going to change things and and you know it's kind of hard to explain cuz it's kind of a weird thing to do um you know so i give people that kind of guidance so it's not really medical you know but it's more helping them navigate life i guess from a very intuitive place sure that can be very beneficial, I'm sure. It gets so hectic, you know, just daily life, especially business people and people climbing ladders in the corporate world and just all kinds of stuff. Um, so if people are interested in learning more or booking sessions with you, where can they find you? So the best place for them to go is my primary website, which is uh, RitaLouise.com. And you can find out about all the products and services I offer. I'm kind of tied to that site. And where you can get to it from the RitaLouise.com site is uh, medical-intuitives, that's plural, intuitives.com, which has a more robust uh, listing of the different medical intuition, energy healing, and those type of services that I offer to my clients. Fantastic. I'm sure our listeners will check out your website as soon as they hear that. I encourage it as well. Thank you. Is there anything else that uh, you'd like to add before we let you go today? Um, you know, I think that we all have the power to heal and we all have the power to make changes in our lives. And I think once people understand what's keeping them from making those changes, whether it's physical, emotional, or spiritual, it gives them the opportunity to better themselves, better their lives, better their future. And that's how I feel I'm here to help people move forward. It's a sound piece of advice. I like it. I like that, too. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Vita, for all of your helpful information. I'm sure our listeners will find this very interesting, and I'm sure it will pique their interest to just explore a little bit more into this field. Great. Thank you for having me on the show. I really appreciate it. Have a beautiful day. You, too. Well, that was a great interview. I could have talked to her for hours. As always, I feel like we say that about every guest that we have on here. I know. I do feel like it, though. You know, we listen to podcasts like Rich Roll and uh, the Joe Rogan Experience. And, you know, they'll just go for hours and hours and hours. And we love it. We love to put it on during our road trips or, you know, whenever we just feel like hanging out. But we might get there one day. Yeah, we might let it uh, let it roll for a little bit longer than we normally do. But in the meantime, we'll keep it short and sweet. Your health tip of the episode, lemon balm. So, lemon balm. It is really great for a lot of things. I feel like I say that about everything that we talk about as a health tip. But 
uh, for those that suffer from anxiety, from depression, this is something that you want in your pantry. And I recommend getting the loose leaf uh, leaves that you can actually steep and infuse as a tea. It's much more powerful that way. And when you do that, it will help to kind of calm you down, bring you into a more state of zen. And this is something that I don't like to say, oh, do this once, do this twice. You know, this is something that you want to do regularly. Yeah, if you guys remember our Herbs with Ash episode a few weeks ago or mm -hmm. a couple weeks ago, um, she she's an herb herbalist and she talks about how it's important that you make a routine out of herbal medicine, that your teas are done regularly and your oils and things of that sort. Yeah, so... I mean, the thing is, is with any herb, it's going to take a little while. I mean, some herbs that you notice right away, like kava, we had a kava episode, episode 10, great episode, and that is also for depression, anxiety, um, but that's something that will work generally right away. You'll feel the benefits of it, but other herbs, lemon balm, it may take a few weeks. So this is something that you want to use every night, every day, whenever you feel like using it. It's something to use over and over again. You can even do it multiple times a day. Um, but the other thing is it's not just for uh, depression, anxiety. It's also for nausea and indigestion. It's for colds. So if you have any indigestion, something that you might want to drink after a meal. Uh, something if you have a cold and you're suffering from seasonal colds or sinus issues, lemon balm is your friend. So that is really it in regards to lemon balm. There is essential oils as well. Uh, we do have a diffuser that we use on a regular basis, which we really enjoy. And you can pick up these essential oils at most health food stores. Uh, you can get them online, but again, use your discernment to which ones are the better ones because there are definitely, you can talk or listen to Cardin's episode, mm -hmm. episode, Ooh. it's hard to keep track of all. 17 maybe? Yeah, Cardin Lopez, she's wonderful and she tells you all about essential oils, but Lemon Bob does come in essential oil, so two ways, infusions, tea infusions, or essential oil. And I think that's about it. Sounds good. I think you covered it. All right. Go get your lemon balm. Get your lemon balm. And any questions, send us a message. <laughs>